Hi, I'm Sarah Kate Tolman. I'm the music teacher for Van Pelt Elementary and Highland View Elementary, and we're going to start reading Chapter 4, Peanut Butter and Jelly. Cleo woke up Tuesday feeling bearish, which was what you were when things were not looking up. She was intrigued by the thought of getting to know her new teacher, since everyone said he was the opposite of his name, Mr. Boring. But she was not really looking forward to school. First of all, there was the school part. Cleo liked learning things, if only she didn't have to do all those pesky assignments. And this year, she had to face the awfulest of awful assignments, the one she'd been dreading since third grade, the fifth grade family tree project. Ugh. Every year, they hung in the fifth grade hallway of New Heights Elementary, construction paper trees with green leaves labeled with names, names of kids' parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, aunts and uncles, biological family, learning about genes, finding out about where you came from, all stuff she couldn't do because her birth parents, whoever they were, hadn't wanted her to know who they were. She glanced at Fortune A. Davies on her wall. A knock came at the door. She sat up and put her feet on the floor. Dad poked his head in. See you later, sunshine. He came over and kissed the sleep cap that covered her hair. Have a great first day. You're leaving? I told you last night, I've got zero period this year. What about chocolate chip pancakes? They always had chocolate chip pancakes on the first day of school. Rain check, Saturday, promise. He held out his hand for their special promise handshake. Clasp, slide palms, fluttery fingertips. She did it, but not happily. Her day hadn't needed any help getting worse. Shouting erupted on the other side of the wall. JJ screamed and then started crying. Footsteps pounded down the hall. Mom! Julian drew on my Nerf gun. Sounds like trouble in paradise. Better go help out. Dad gave her a squeeze. That was a really generous thing you did, giving your brother that money. Dad had bought the Nerf gun with Josh the night before. They'd gotten a great Labor Day deal, of course. Cleo let herself be hugged. She inhaled Dad's fresh, just showered morning scent. Too quickly, he was leaving. Mom and Dad pecked lips as they crossed paths in the doorway. See you after soccer practice, Dad said. Cleo! You should be up and dressed by now. What is the holdup? Mom rushed back out. Stop hitting your brother with that! Cleo pulled herself out of bed and trudged to the closet, took off her purple satin cap, and shook out her braids. She had begged Mom to let her sport the twist and curl style that Tasha had done for her a few weeks back, but Mom insisted it was too high maintenance, and it would only last a few days instead of a few weeks. They were sticking with braids for now. She deliberated for a long time over what to wear. Finally, she decided on her favorite purple and orange striped blouse with the ruffles on the cuffs and down the front, even though it was getting a little tight. On the bottom, she wore a black skirt with orange leggings. Her skin peeked through a small hole in one knee, but she didn't think it was too noticeable. Wear bold. Be bold. It was one of Fortune's favorite sayings. She looked back at the poster. Fortune looked straight ahead, her smile unflinching. Cleo stood on her bed. She basked in the gaze of the woman's steady, sparkling eyes, studied her brilliant, poster-perfect smile. Style, self-assurance, success. One day, Cleo would have these things, too. She jumped from the bed and headed to the bathroom. No, no, don't, Mom! Ow, ow, ow! Josh jiggled on the bathroom step stool. Mom bent over him with a determined look on her face. She clenched his toothbrush in her fist. Josh, stop wiggling. We have to brush your teeth, all of them. Cleo put toothpaste on her brush. You should just yank it out, Mom. We could do it while he's sleeping. Josh narrowed his eyes at Cleo and held up his fist. I'll give you a knuckle sandwich. Mom sighed in frustration. I wish your uncle hadn't taught you that. She moved in with the brush again. Josh wailed. It's just a tooth, Josh. You don't have to have a nuclear meltdown over it. Cleo rolled her eyes and started brushing. You would have thought they were threatening to cut off his leg, the way he screamed and carried on whenever the subject of pulling his tooth came up. Finally, they were done. 
Josh gave Cleo the evil eye on his way out the door. Dear Lord, Mom sighed. I can't go through this 17 more times, and I'm definitely not doing what I did the first time ever again. Josh had held out so long with his first loose tooth that by the end, it was hanging by a mere thread of gum tissue. He had swallowed it in his sleep, which meant that if Mom wanted to have Josh's first lost tooth in her special memories box, she'd have to dig it through the toilet for it, which she did every time he pooped. Eventually, they found it. No keepsake, no matter how precious, was worth that. Cleo finished brushing her teeth and then grabbed her letter to Fortune and ran to the mailbox. She put the letter inside and raised the little red flag. In four to five days, according to Mom, it would be delivered to Fortune's office. She would read it and see how determined Cleo was to succeed. She would write back and sign the letter with her very own hand. Cleo headed back to the house, pondering Fortune's response. A letter from Fortune signed in ink from a pen she had held. It would practically be the same as being in the woman's presence. Having her signature like that, it would hold magic. It would be Cleo's most prized possession ever. In fact, she probably would. Yes, she'd even stick her hand in a toilet to save it. As the family minivan pulled up to the school, Cleo searched for the huddles of kids looking for Kaylee's black hair and baby blue suede jacket. Cleo hadn't seen her best friend in 10 whole days. She'd been visiting her dad at his new house in Palm Springs. Mom came around to the side door. She hugged Josh hard and kissed his face before he jumped down. Have a great day, my big first grader. Cleo stepped out and Mom wrapped her arms around her. Love you, kiddo. She kissed her forehead. You sure you don't want me to hang around until the bell rings? I'm sure. You nervous? No. Why would she be nervous? You were clicking your wrist. Cleo's right wrist had a click in it. She had a habit of circling it until she heard seven clicks in a row for good luck. Maybe she did it a bit more when she was nervous. I'm okay. Come on, Josh said urgently. Benny is waiting for me. Mom squeezed her again. See you after school, love. Okay, love you too. They walked toward the building. Josh turned and waved as the van pulled away. Remember, I'm in room 14 if you need me, Cleo said when Mom was gone. Why would I need you? He peered out from beneath his Dodgers hat. So much for trying to be a helpful big sister. I don't know. What if you get a bloody nose? I'll pinch it and go see Nurse Bush. Bishara? Between nosebleeds, tummy aches, and his asthma, Josh spent a fair amount of time in the nurse's office. He and Nurse Bashara were practically best buds. She shrugged. Okay. Josh saw Benny and took off running. See you later, she called. Bye. She kept going through the front doors and the short hallway that separated the multi-purpose room and gym from the main office and onto the playground. Haley was walking up at the same time from the opposite direction. Peanut butter! Jelly! The fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Neusmeyer, had told them they were like peanut butter and jelly, impossible to separate. Cleo ran and gave Kaylee a huger than normal bug a hug, as if they'd been apart for months. A bug a hug was a hug they'd invented that was so tight it practically made your eyes bug out. Nice outfit, Cleo stood back so she could admire Kaylee's clothes. Her turquoise t-shirt came down over the hips of her cuff jeans, which had hearts and flowers stitched on the legs. Over her shirt, she had on a totally adorable purple bolero sweater and on her feet, purple Mary Jane shoes. My dad took me back to school shopping. Cleo's striped, too tight, button-up blouse suddenly seemed faded. The sleeve felt a little too short, and the hole in her leggings felt gaping. Her family hadn't gone back to school shopping this year. Kaylee's chin-length straight black hair was held back on either side by funky felt hair clips, a paintbrush on one side, and an artist's palette on the other. Did he buy you these cool clips too? Cleo reached out, reached out to touch the palette. I made them, actually. Cleo's eyes bugged with the hug. Whoa, they're great. You can sell these. Thanks. Kaylee slipped through her, 
slipped her arm through Cleo's, and they walked toward the painted line on the playground outside the classroom. They reached their door, the only ones in line. Where were you last night? I sent Barkley over. Last spring, when she'd been grounded from the phone for a month for calling an 888 fortune teller number, she had created a message capsule that attached to her dog's collar with Velcro, Cleo's canine carrier capsule. Then she trained Barkley to take messages back and forth between the Ortegas and her house, and voila, Barkley the carrier dog. The night before, he'd come back with her message still in the capsule. I got home late from my dad's. Did you swim? I can't wait to go with you. I'd be in the pool the whole time. Kaylee looked at her feet. She was suddenly very quiet. I um, didn't really feel like swimming. She kept her head down for so long that Cleo looked too, thinking maybe she'd seen something interesting, like an unchewed piece of bubblegum or a lost earring. He's got this new girlfriend, and they were always going off places and leaving me and EJ behind. The whistle to line up shrilled. A girlfriend? Something just didn't seem right about a dad having a girlfriend. Cleo was about to say so when she heard Lexi Lewis's mocking voice. Hey, listener, how was your summer? Much more laboring than mine, I'm sure. Cleo stood as straight and tall as she could, but Lexi still looked down on her. She wore a fur-lined hooded vest, a gold purse covered in rhinestone flowers hung by her side. Who brought a purse to school? Lexi Lewis, that's who. I see you're still wearing braids. Lexi's hair was pressed and sleek all the way down to her shoulders. I see you're still at new heights. Lexi always bragged that her parents planned to put her and her brother Cole in private school. If only they would, Cleo thought. Her life would be so much easier. Did you think I wouldn't be? Hoped was more like it. What about private school? We're applying for middle schools now. Elementary doesn't really matter anyway. Her eyelids fluttered. How are your dolls? Cleo clenched her teeth. I don't play with dolls. You did last year. Well, I don't anymore. I'm too busy running my businesses. Oh, like selling doll rugs? No, avocados. Lexi sputtered. <laughs> avocados? Yep. Made $33 yesterday. Wow, Cleo, Kaylee said. That's a lot. Cleo could tell Lexi didn't want to look too impressed. Not nearly enough to buy this. She held up the purse. If you're wondering, yes, it's a real Trudy Ferretti. She admired her own handbag. Tutti Fruity, Kaylee said, her nose wrinkled. Isn't that an ice cream flavor? Cleo cracked up. Lexi Lewis just cracked. At least it looked like her long, skinny face had. I said Trudy Ferretti, but of course you two wouldn't know. Cleo knew, actually. Fortune loved Trudy Ferretti shoes and handbags. She's only the hottest designer of the decade, Lexi crowed. The whistle sounded again. Too bad we're not in the same class this year, Le Snore. I could have taught you some things about fashion. She looked Cleo up and down. I'll give you a quick tip now. Get rid of the re religious leggings. Cleo looked at her confused. Religious leggings? Lexi pointed at Cleo's knee. They're holy. She laughed as if it were funny. Cleo stuffed her fists into the crooks of her arms and made her eyes into slits. If Lexi Lewis wasn't careful, she was going to get herself a knuckle sandwich before this year was over. See you around, the tutti fruity purse swung out to the side as she swiveled and flounced toward the other fifth grade line. For your information, my middle name isn't Lenore anymore, Cleo called after her. It's Edison! Lexi ignored her. She's horrible, Kaylee said, using one of their favorite made up words. The opposite of horrible was splendarvelous. They both giggled, and Cleo's fists relaxed. The door to their classroom opened, and a tall, skinny man in a red, blue, and green Hawaiian shirt came out. 
Hello, room number 14, fifth graders. Do I have some big plans for you? He high-fived Cleo, Kaylee, and a few other kids at the front of the line. Cleo wished she had some big plans for how to deal with Lexi Lewis. She glanced at Lexi's purse, glinting in the sun, and told herself she could care less if Lexi Lewis owned a Trudy Ferretti, even if the designer label was Fortune's favorite. Ooh, this sounds pretty interesting. I'm kind of interested about this Lexi Lewis that I'm not a big fan of. Bye.